Um, welcome to Wiltshire Council's Ask the Athlete. My name's Polly Mayton. I'm a T46 long jumper and 100 meter runner. Um, I competed in the Rio 2016 Paralympic Games um, and I'm also a world civil, silver medalist from the World Championships in London in 2017. Um, and I'm really excited to answer your questions. So I'm gonna start, um, I've got them like on the screen behind me. So if you see me like scrolling, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so the first one, number one, how old were you when you started athletics and why did you take it up? So I started athletics, well, obviously as most people, I think I, um, I did sports days throughout primary school. Um, but then I kind of properly started getting into club athletics when um, age kind of eight or nine every year um, a local organization called the Lions Club would come around to local primary schools in the area um, and ask kids if they wanted to do kind of like try out new sports um, so every year I think over the years I tried out like fencing I tried uh, yeah lots of kind of like random different sports um, and one year I really wanted to do trampolining um, was my number one but it was very told it was very oversubscribed so they told me to put a second um, a few of my friends were doing athletics so I decided to put athletics down um, and I went along and I met my now coach Colin and did a two-day um, trial out and loved it so I joined the local club um, so yeah I think that's I, I just loved it I think that's principally why I took it up and why I continue doing it. Um, I didn't get into power athletics till I was about 11. I didn't know much about it. Um, one day I, I was training at the University of Bath and a recruiter um, came up to me and said, um, would you like to compete in the para junior um, Southwest championships the next day? And I got my first pair of spikes. I remember mum and I drove up um, I got my first pair of spikes and I got to um, compete. Um, I loved it and then that's how I got into para athletics as well. So yeah, that's, and I've been doing it since, yeah, I was eight or nine. Um, uh, so yeah, I've been doing it for quite a while. Uh, two, which do you prefer, sprinting or long jump and why? I'm not gonna lie, it kind of shifts uh, <laughs> depending um, on how I'm feeling or how well I'm doing. Um, I think sprinting is um, much more intense. <laughs> um, I, I think there's always a lot more eyes on you, um, and always you always get such a buzz from winning because I think you know you are kind of like it's just such an obvious. And it's very like intense. Obviously, like for me, it's about twelve seconds. But um, I, I think I enjoy long jump the most. Um, I think it, I like the technical element to it, which obviously there isn't sprinting, but obviously there's a lot more to think about with long jump. I like being able to have six attempts. Um, sometimes when you've travelled literally to a different country to compete, it's nice to have more than one go at something. Um, so yeah, I'd probably say long jump. Three, which athlete inspired you when you were younger and why? Um, I think I had a lot of uh, different athletes that inspired me when I was younger. Um, I remember being very inspired by Ellie Simmons when she competed um, in Beijing and then in London. Um, definitely from power athletes, Johnny Peacock, Hannah Cockcroft from 2012, um, Usain Bolt, another obvious, but uh, definitely inspired me when I was younger. Um, I'm also very interested, I suppose, in the political and social impacts of sport um, and Tommy Carlos and, uh, sorry, Tommy Smith and John Carlos uh, from the 1968 uh, Mexico uh, New Mexico Olympic Games and their Black Power Salute definitely inspired me as well. Um, so yeah, number four. What was your experience at Rio, the Rio Paralympics like? What was your favorite part and why? Um, so my experience for Rio, the Rio Paralympics was definitely like a complete whirlwind. Um, I was picked for experience, I was kind of like last person on the plane kind of thing um i was picked age 16 um so again like everything was very new exciting like i was just very overwhelmed to have been selected i remember getting the call um and i literally I, they waited all day so they get they tell you the day that they're going to decide and then they'll ring you to tell you if you've been selected or not um and i kept like waiting all day and it was about six o'clock in the evening before they called me so i'd had a whole day of like holding my breath every time the, the phone went for like something other else really random. Um, and then they finally 
got to me and they said you're going and I remember just like falling to the floor and crying and being and my, my parents then ran in and didn't know if I'd been selected or not they they didn't know either way um <laughs> so I've been selected but then I wasn't sure I kept having to like check like are you sure like was that a definite yes like I didn't like miss hear you um and then I remember bringing my coach um Colin who shouted very loudly what in a training session um, and started jumping up and down and then I told him that actually he couldn't tell anyone for a couple of days so I think he came up with some elaborate lie to tell people who I think may have seen through him but yeah um, so that was amazing um, and then I th definitely I remember getting the kit which again is pretty exciting I think that was one of the coolest things I remember like trying it all on um, and then I remember going being really scared I literally got my GCSE results the day before I got them oh no I got them in the morning and then went off to the airport so I was kind of like just in a complete uh whirlwind apologies just had to cut there <laughs> my dad walked behind the screen um and we're currently on holiday so he was in his room costume I'm not sure he would have been that pleased if I'd kept him in um so yeah um question four what were Rio Paralympics like um getting there again really overwhelming like even the village itself like it's massive complex um even from i was excited for everything like the food hall like where i was staying um i also loved rio as a city um I, I thought it was amazing it's so spectacular like scenery and you've got these massive mountains and then the sea um so i love that um yeah so i loved it and then actually competing again um i remember being in the cool room which is like where you go before you go out to compete um for my first event which was the long jump um and you kind of like underneath the kind of like the stadium so kind of here and then you went out i remember being so nervous um really really nervous but actually going out and then being able to compete was just it was amazing it was one of definitely one of the best experiences of my life um and i only then was more excited to do the sprints and i got to uh do the 100 meter uh heat and then I luckily got through to the final so I got to do it all over again. Uh, I was just there for experience um, so there wasn't too much pressure on me to kind of medal. Um, it was more for me, I literally was told like Polly go experience everything like this is for you to like know what games is like um, and I did so yeah it, <laughs> I couldn't have really like lost from it there wasn't really anything that there weren't really no pressures on me which was lovely um and I yeah just got to kind of experience everything which was fantastic so as I said definitely one of the best experiences of my life and I'm so so lucky to have had it uh number five what did it feel like winning a medal at the 2017 world championships um so I think I mentioned earlier but in 2017 um, I won a silver medal at the world championships in London uh, for the women's long jump in my classification which is t46 um, it was incredible I was just saying about Rio and that was being one of my best experiences of my life this also would definitely be one of the best experiences of my life um, it was in the Olympic London 2012 Olympic and Paralympic Stadium which I'd been to see I actually was lucky enough to get tickets to see the athletics for the Olympics and the Paralympics so being able to go and compete and it was the first time I'd ever competed in the stadium um, as an athlete I was so excited just being able to again experience it all um, and see it I was just yeah overwhelmed um, I'd previously competed I'd done actually that in those championships my sprints were first I had the 100 meters first um I'd done okay I got fifth but I was slightly disappointed with the time I'd um run um and I'd got a, picked up a slight calf niggle during the holding camp um which had kind of stayed with me uh through the through the hundreds so I wasn't expecting much from the long jump I literally went out and I was like I'm going to enjoy myself um and it came to the um long jump and I went out and did my first jump and I felt really good which I was a bit surprised about and I saw uh, myself and I was in second place so I was like what's happening um, but obviously long jumps six rounds so you know anything can change and it did and in the last round um, I got knocked down to fourth so it was kind of I had to go big or go home to get a medal and luckily um, I pulled it back out um, did um the biggest jump i did of the six and was able to go back into second place and again that was an amazing experience my uh family were in the crowd like very close by my dad managed to <laughs> jump the uh jump the fence in the arena um i got told off by the security guard but it was definitely a very special moment um 
for everyone and again as I said being in London 2012 arena was very very special um, so yeah definitely again one of the best experiences of my life um, and loved it um, number six sorry just scrolling making sure I get number six how did you feel when the Tokyo Paralympics were postponed for a year given that you were recovering from an operation and would have missed them if they were this year um, yeah so a bit of background um, unfortunately in March um, I was doing long jump practice and in a very um, <laughs> kind of like a very very unlucky injury it's not something that normally happen I managed to just get my foot got caught in a lump in the sand um and in so doing kind of turn that way um and I lacerated all the ligaments on my the right side of my right ankle and some on the left side of my right ankle um so <laughs> not good um it w was definitely um yeah kind of like the worst thing I think that can happen on um, the lead up to a games um, and I went to the hospital and had to have an operation and they essentially told me that was my season over which was um, obviously completely devastating having wanted to um, try and compete again in the Tokyo Paralympics which was supposed to be this year um, and then of course uh, we had um, the coronavirus pandemic lockdown and subsequently the games being postponed um, I obviously like for me personally it does give me a shot I might not have already had and I suppose a bit of a silver lining um, but I suppose everything I definitely wasn't leaping for joy um, I think that if this pandemic has told it showed us anything it's that um, life's precious um, and that we shouldn't you know while sports important um, health should always come first um, and yeah, I obviously would not have wished a global pandemic on games being postponed. Um, and again, it's given me a bit of perspective on things and what to be grateful for. Um, I love my sport, but obviously there are a lot of other things to be grateful for as well. Um, so yeah, well, <laughs> definitely a silver lining. I think more generally I've just been, um, it has given me perspective this year on, yeah, what to be grateful for. Number seven. Um, how do you balance your university work and training? Uh, <laughs> sometimes not very well. Um, so I'm currently studying history and politics at the University of Oxford alongside training. Um, I've been very lucky in that I've managed to uh, agree with the University of Oxford to split my second year. So I have half the workload um, so I have it yeah, split over two years. So I'm doing my second year over two years instead of one, uh, which has made it a lot easier. Definitely my first year was pretty intense. Um, it's always, yeah, it's slightly difficult to manage, but this year has definitely been more easy, it's definitely been far easier. And the next year, um, I think will be, uh, hopefully, uh, it's still easier as well. Um, it was obviously in preparation for 2020. Um, luckily, my split year continues next year as well. So um, I still have a little bit more time than I otherwise would. Um, in terms of balance and how to, it's definitely been a learning curve for me. I think realizing that you can't always give 100% to everything, it's sometimes not possible. So you've got to prioritize. Um, and while I'm really bad at it, planning, making sure you know um, when you need to peak or when you need to be excelling more in one of the areas than the other so if you have exams or you have um, a big athletics competition and working around um, and also keeping communication with everyone um, keeping communication with your coach your tutors and like when the pressures are getting um, too much but I'm not gonna lie sometimes that doesn't go to plan and I'm trying to write an essay before a big competition but um, it's all worth it in the end I think I love my studies and I love my sport um, number eight what music do you listen to for inspiration when you are training and competing? Um, interesting fact when you're actually competing, I always get very jealous seeing the swimmers come in with their massive headphones out of cool room, uh, ready to go to the pool. Um, but we're actually not allowed uh, headphones. We're allowed them when you're warming up, as soon as you get into cool room, which is where you sit and wait before you go into the uh, main arena, arena for competition. You are, your phones are confiscated, your headphones are confiscated, you have to sit in silence. So um, I quite often have to rely and listen to the arena music and whoever's playing um, to try and get myself in the zone. Um, 
but yeah no i and then in training again like i generally don't listen to music i'm kind of a bit boring i generally quite like to especially when i'm doing long jumps not really something that you'd want to put your big headphones on um but i suppose on the way to competitions i love listening to a kind of i'm quite like a good bit of like cheesy pop maybe some rap maybe some like eminem i don't it, it kind of varies i don't have like too much of a set um playlist i listen to but yeah anything that gets you kind of up and going uh number nine does your disability affect how you train and compete um yes definitely um i i am definitely in para sport for a reason um i think i definitely train differently um although uh, my coach has been always very good in just adapting what he's giving to um my able-bodied counterparts at training rather than setting me a completely different session uh most stuff i can do it just i do it slightly differently to others um mainly gym work i suppose would be something where you'd see me doing slightly different things um i have a safety squat bar for example so again i squat like anyone else but i will have a safety squat bar so instead of the bar which kind of just goes along i have one which also goes down by your shoulders um gives me more stability um i have a prosthetic arm which i use to run jump and sometimes use in the gym um so yeah i suppose that's my disability i wouldn't say affects me i think it's an additional challenge which i have to adapt to um and use different um equipment or different styles to get the same results in the end and finally number 10 uh what long-term goals and ambitions do you have in your sport um i suppose like anyone um the biggest goal you could possibly want to achieve would be to be a Paralympic champion and that's definitely something I would love to do. Um, I suppose a more intermediate level if you can I'd love to obviously be a Paralympic medalist that would be incredible. I would love to um, be able to compete in other Paralympic Games just as said the experience itself is fantastic so that would be something I'd love to do again. Um, and while a bit more boring, continuing to PB, it's, you know, one of the best feelings, I think, in athletics. And something I love about athletics is you can get so much um, satisfaction and so much, uh, feel so much achievement from beating yourself and beating your previous best, um, no matter, like, where you come, which I think is really great. So, um, yeah, I'd love to be, be seeing some more PBs once I'm hopefully back from injury. Um, so, yeah, I think I'll wrap up the questions there. Challenge time. Uh, I was also asked to set a challenge for you guys. Um, sorry, this in the gym, my room is really echoey. So as I'm a jumper, I thought it would only make sense to set you a jumping challenge. So I want to see how far everyone can get doing five bunny hops. So when I mean bunny hops, I'll show you in a second, but basically jumping each time for as long as you can go each time and then see how far you got in the end. Um, I'm currently, as I said in the q and I'm just coming rehabbing from an injury, so please be nice to me. My jumps are not going to look very good, and I'm not going to do them all, uh, but I'm just going to give you a little demo to show you what they should look like. So, if I go back. And then, so, you want to start, uh, probably with your feet about hip width apart, facing forward. Want to get your arms involved, in my case, on the static arm, one from her arm. So you want to swing, get the land, and jump, make sure you stick the landing, and then you want to go again, and then again, and again, and again, until you get to five. Um, and then if you've got a kind person with you who can measure that, that would be fine, otherwise do it in feet. And I'd be really interested to see how far you can jump. I know you will definitely all beat me. Um, but hopefully, hopefully, as I continue to rehab, I'll be able to see if I can beat you guys again. Um, so yeah, I hope you all enjoy the challenge. I think that about wraps it up. Thank you so much for having me, Wiltshire Council, on Ask the Athletes. Always an honour and a privilege. Um, it's been lovely to speak to you all. Um, and I hope you're all staying safe and well. Um, speak soon.